It's time for another week in the NFL. Last week was a bit of a weaker one again. I've been doing pretty well, but last week I had some really bad misses, and uh, I'll admit to that. For example, the, the Chicago Bears and the Lions. I had the Lions, and it didn't turn out that way, and I'm ready to admit that. It was a bad pick, and I was already told about that before the week even happens by people in the comments and yeah i recognize that bad pick probably not gonna happen again uh that type of mistake but also some surprises patriots got smacked by the tennessee titans which i didn't expect they look pretty bad and the titans offense looked decently well i mean mariota outplayed tom brady all his weapons even didn't help him that much. I put up 10 points, which is not enough. And Tennessee, that was a convincing win too. It wasn't even a close one. They dominated from the start and they made it happen. But let's get into week 11. First of all, we have the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. Two NFC teams that were once absolutely great and now have fallen down a little bit. Not to say that they're still not playing good. And specifically Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, who's still... Played another fantastic game last week and won, like I said, he would. I'm going to pick the Packers over the Seahawks this time. I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback, best football player in the world. He's going to win the game in, in Seattle. That's all I can say about that. Bengals and the Ravens. I'll take the Cincinnati Bengals. I've heard that the Ravens are about to start Lamar Jackson. I'm not sure if reports of that are true, but I've, I've heard that before. I think he's going to struggle a little bit. I mean, that doesn't mean that he's really bad already, but uh, I think it's for, maybe this is his first game as a start. I think Andy Dalton's going to take advantage of that and lead the Bengals to win. And uh, I think the Bengals have been decently healthy. They've been playing all right. And uh, they're going to beat the Baltimore Ravens in in a very important game, by the way. But uh, if the Ravens are starting Jackson, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Cowboys and the Falcons. Gaming the Dallas Cowboys. Falcons kind of disappointed and the Cowboys got a huge win like it or not they had a huge win over the Eagles and it really was uh, Ezekiel Elliott who took that game on his shoulders and, and they ran for two touchdowns and a and 150 huge game by him and he's the guy who they're gonna have to rely on if they want to make the playoffs they make the huge uh, step towards that because the Eagles were still my favorite in that division and I kind of not sure if that's still the case. Now, I mean, they lost to the Cowboys, and the Redskins are, by the way, looking the best team in that division so far. Uh, I'm picking the Cowboys over the Falcons here. Buccaneers and the New York Giants. I'll take the Buccaneers. They're both not very good, but the Giants are horrible. And the Buccaneers aren't necessarily bad. They've had flashes of greatness. Well, greatness, but they've had flashes of being good, so they're going to beat the Giants. Steelers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have been revitalized like wow like what they did to the Carolina Panthers they put up 52 points it was one of those games that Ben Roethlisberger just has once or twice a year where he puts up 500 plus yards and five touchdowns or something crazy like that and all that without Le'Veon Bell and he it looks like he's not coming back it looks more and more like that but they don't seem to need him Jacksonville is on the down Blake Bortles is just not the guy and they're not playing the way they did last year, all over, so should be an easy one for the Steelers. Texans and the Washington Redskins. Now, I mentioned it before, the Redskins are playing great, and ga give me the Redskins over the Texans. Now, Texans aren't bad by any means. Deshaun Watson is alright, they have De DeAndre Hopkins and of course a mean defensive line, but I think the Redskins are going to deal with that. They have a mean defensive line themselves, and I think they're doing a better job getting consistent pressure on people. And also scoring the points that they have to. Adrian Peterson playing, been playing really well. And uh, Alex Smith is doing a better job than I expected him to do. It wasn't a huge downgrade so far as it looks from Kirk Cousins. And uh, Redskins over the Texans here. Titans and the Colts. Both teams won. But the difference being that the Titans beat the Patriots in a clear game. Colts beat the Jaguars in a really close game. That speaks volumes because the Patriots and the Jaguars are not on the same level. And I know that Blake Bortles played really well against the Patriots this year, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm going to say the Titans are going to beat the Colts. I like Andrew Locke better than Marcus Mariota, but I like the Titans as a team a lot better. And they showed a lot of promise last week. So they're going to beat the Colts in my opinion. Panthers and the Detroit Lions. I'll take the Panthers. They are low-key a top 5 team in this league. Um, they haven't played well at all. Uh, against the Steelers, but other than that, they have looked pretty good. Now, of course, they can't have a showing like that again. I think that was a fluke for the most part. I, th I think that uh, 
indicates them being really, really bad. I don't think they're going to take the division either because the Saints are too strong. But I do believe that they can beat the Detroit Lions, who are pretty mediocre, supposedly. Matthew Stafford is is a good quarterback, but he doesn't have what it like doesn't quite have what it takes in himself and around himself to make big things happen this year. Panthers are going to take advantage of that and going to win in Detroit. Broncos and the Chargers. Important divisional game for the Chargers, for sure, as they're trying to keep up with Kansas City, which is a hard thing to do, mind you. Broncos shouldn't exactly uh, stop their party, so I'm, I'm going to say that the Chargers will have no problem defeating Denver, and uh, they're going to keep up with the... Uh, with the wins as much as they can. Philip Rivers still playing an outstanding season, so he's gonna get the dub here. Raiders and the Cardinals, two really, really bad teams. I'll take the Cardinals anyway, because the Raiders are getting worse by the week. I just heard rumors of Jordy Nelson retiring as a point of recording this. At the point of where this is life, it might have already happened. And remember, they traded away Amari Cooper and Marshall Lynch got hurt, and then Khalil Mack, of course, in the beginning of the season, so that team has gotten actively worse and worse throughout the season. John Gruden, I don't believe in him. They're the worst team in the NFL by a good bit. And uh, the Cardinals are also going to beat them. Eagles and the Saints. Before the season, I would have thought this would have been one of the absolute top games and really, really close. Uh, right now, it looks like it should be a really easy one for the Saints. They're at home in New Orleans and we know they putting it on people whenever they play in their own Superdome. And uh, even on the road, they have been doing so. To, uh, Drew Brees now, I think, is second of all time in passing touchdowns. He just overtook Brad Favre and is now only trailing Peyton Manning. Which, again, congratulations. He's been breaking records left and right this season. And he's been running for MVP more so than ever, even after last week. Along, I guess, with Patrick Mahomes and maybe Phillip Rivers as an outsider there. Saints are going to beat the Philadelphia Eagles, I don't have a doubt. Vikings and the Bears in the NFC North. I'll take the Vikings, even though the Bears showed some strong promise. The Vikings have an all-around slightly better roster, I want to say. Both pretty good defenses. I like her cousins over Mitch Trubisky. And the Vikings are going to edge it out over the Bears and take charge of that division. And finally, the game of the year. The Chiefs and the LA Rams. It is This is the most high-class game I think we've had. I mean, we had the... Rams and the Saints, which was really close, and the Saints actually managed to win that, which leads me to actually pick the Chiefs in this one too. I'm going to trust the better quarterback, and I think it's Patrick Mahomes. Now, both of them top 10 quarterbacks, no doubt, both of them fantastic players, and both of the offenses explosive. We might have the two top candidates for coach of the year in this one as well, with Andy Reid for the Chiefs and Sean McVay for the Rams, who are both amazing offensive play callers, and this is going to be a firework festival is going to be a fantastic game and everyone needs to watch this football game if you can find the time to do so on monday night next week it's going to be great i'm going to pick the chiefs in a highly contested high scoring great football game so that's my predictions for week 11 let me know what you agree and disagree with we do have six teams on bye week again this week that will be the bills the browns patriots 49ers dolphins and Jets. Now, quick word about the Jets and Bills game. Last week, I said that, that it wasn't going to be a good one, and it really wasn't. What this game showed me is that the Jets already are so reliant on Sam Darnold. It's not looking very good so far. They need everything. Like, they need everything to improve. Josh Allen is not in a great situation. Baker Mayfield Maybe a little bit better, but also not a great situation by at the moment in Cleveland. But the Jets are looking horrible. They're looking like one of the worst teams in the league. And Buffalo, without Josh Allen even, put it on them. Completely destroyed the Jets. And that can't happen. It shows that Sam Darrell is playing really, really well. And he's carrying this team. Even though the record doesn't show that they're playing great. But they're so much worse without him. And they still have a lot of work to do. They have the quarterback in place now. So I'm assuming the future is going to look better. Because they can now try to build around him. But that was not a good showing. And that brought him back to reality a little bit. And uh, they need Arnold really, really badly. And they still have work to do. So those teams are on by. Patriots as well. They're going to use it for sure after that blowout loss to the Titans. So yeah, let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with, what's your picks. I'm going to see you in the next video. Like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Beyond Football to check out some of my other stuff. And uh, yeah, later.